Hey everyone! Um, so I have a collection video for you guys today. Um, this was requested by one of my subscribers. Um, I believe her username is a book in every room, I want to say. Um, and I feel really bad because I only just saw this request, but um, she commented on my Penguin English Library collection videos from like a month ago, um, asking if I would do an Agatha Christie collection and I thought that was a great idea and I thought maybe I'd already done one and then I looked and apparently I've only showed her books in either book halls or um or bookshop tours which I just thought was kind of weird um so I was very excited about this suggestion and so here we go um and I just want to say like for anyone who has commented on my videos from like a while ago um, if I'm getting back to you late, I'm so sorry. My notification thing is messed up and I need to like sit down with my computer and figure out what's going on, but I've actually had to go back and manually check for comments on my videos instead of uh, receiving notifications about it. So um, if you commented on a video that I did like a month or two ago and I haven't yet gotten back to you, I'm really sorry. Um, it's just because I didn't know that it happened, so I'm going back and checking, and I will get back to people as I see them. Um, but anyway, here we go. Um, this is kind of weird because I've arranged it by editions of books instead of by series, so I will just explain what series it belongs to and whether I've read it or not, um, or if it's a standalone uh, as we go along, and I have just counted and I have a total of 36 of her novels and or short story collections if you include um, in two of the bind ups that I have. One of them I have five novels and one I have two novels. So if you count the individual stories, um, I mean the individual novels, then I have 36 of her works, which I'm um, creating quite a nice little collection here, which I love. Okay, so I think I will start with the ugly hardcovers because those are my least favorite, so I want to get those out of the way. <laughs> um, I have a couple ugly hardcovers that I found in used bookstores, and basically if I end up loving these stories when I get to them, then I will just get um, new, prettier editions uh, after I read them. But first is Dead Man's Folly which uh, this is one of the later um, Poirots, so I have not read it yet because I'm specifically reading Poirot in chronological order, um, and this is just about the ugliest cover that I've ever seen. Um, it's very dated, so there's that one. Um, and then another one, this one's not as bad, this is Elephants Can Remember, um, which is yet again a kind of later Poirot, so again I haven't gotten to it yet, um, but for both of these I have seen the ITV um, films, because I've seen all of, I think it's ITV, who um, did the Poirot show, but um, I have seen all of the um, David Suchet uh, TV films. Um, but yeah, this one's not as bad. Like, I find the colors really cool, and I like the puzzle part, but it's just a little bit dated. Um, next is Sleeping Murder and Murder at the Vicarage, uh, Miss Marple's first case and Miss Marple's last case. But actually, Sleeping Murder was her last published case, but, um, Agatha Christie wrote it, I think, during World War II and stuck it in a drawer. And then um, it was published in the 70s. Uh, and I like Murder at the Vicarage, but I definitely like Sleeping Murder a lot more. Sleeping Murder is one of my favorite marbles. So, yeah, this is great to have them both in one little one book. Um, but, yeah, the cover's kind of really messed up. Because, again, uh, used bookstore. Next is Curtain. This one I actually like a lot more than the other three. Um, I love the colors, um, the blue and the white and the black and the gray, and then also I love that they put his mustache on the bottom. Um, this is Poirot's last case, and 
so of course I haven't read it yet, and I'm fully expecting to cry when I do. But again, I have seen the film. Um, next are some prettier hardcovers, which, you know, make me happy. It makes me happy that I have a couple pretty ones. Um, first is Hercule Poirot's Christmas. Um, I'm very excited to get to this one. I'm hoping that I can, uh, catch up in my chronological reading enough to be able to read, uh, Hercule Poirot's Christmas by this Christmas, maybe? We'll see. Um, but yeah, I, I like the gold and I just think it's really pretty. Next is Sad Cypress. Um, this is actually in my favorite editions of the hardcovers, but unfortunately these were popular about 10 years ago, uh, which was after I'd started watching the show, but before I started collecting the books. And um, I just really wish that I had already been collecting them at that point, because 10 years ago you could have found maybe like 10 of these in the Barnes & Noble bargain section at a time, and I really like them, and now you can't really find them, um, except online, used, so yeah. But anyway, um, this is a Poirot, and I think it's again one of the later ones, um, but I'm not quite sure where it falls in the chronology and the timeline, um, but haven't gotten to it yet. Uh, next is my only Poro bind-up, um, and I actually, this is another one that I quite like. I like, um, the kind of marble look, and I love the, uh, sarcophagus, is that what that is? Um, but this has Murder on the Orient Express, 13 at Dinner, The ABC Murders, Cards on the Table, and Death on the Nile. I have read Murder on the Orient Express, 13 at Dinner, and The ABC Murders, um, but... I have not yet read Cards on the Table or Death on the Nile. Um, okay, so those are all of my hardcovers. Now we have paperbacks, so I will do the miscellaneous ones first. Um, first I have Murder at Hazelmore, aka The Sitiford Mystery. Um, this is a standalone, even though it was actually adapted as a Miss Marple. Um, and I just read this recently with Katie from Books and Things and Kate Howe, and, um, there are certain things I like better about the book and certain things I like better about the TV film, so, um, all in all I probably like the film a little bit better, which is weird because that doesn't usually happen for me, but anyway, I, I did enjoy it, just not as much as I was hoping. Um, and then we have Mysterious Affair at Styles, which is Hercule Poirot's first case. Um, I really love this one, and I love the illustrations and the colors. Um, I mean the illustration, singular, there's not illustrations in the inside, I don't think. But, yeah, I really like that one. And then we have Halloween Party. This is a later Poirot, so I haven't read it yet. Um, but I have seen the adaptation, and I really like it because it features Ariadne Oliver, who comes in kind of later on in the Poirot stories, uh, so that makes me excited to get to this one. And then we have Miss Marple's Complete Short Stories, um, and I really love the colors. Like, I love the blue and the red, and then the fact that they did a silhouette of Miss Marple. Um, so, for a paperback, I actually think this is very pretty. Um, next, we have two of these little editions. And actually, um, I should have said 37, um, no, 38. 38 of her books, because two of them are on loan. Uh, so one of them I'll talk about really quick, because it's, I have it kind of by itself. I don't have any other editions like it, and that is, and then there were none, which is a standalone of hers. It's actually, um, not only my favorite standalone of hers, but probably my favorite of all of her novels that I've read so far. Um, and that's on loan to my friend Ben. And then my friend Mac actually has Body in the Library that matches these two. Um, and that is a Miss Marple. I believe it's the, um, the second Miss Marple, maybe. Um, and then these two are both Poros. Uh, this is The Murder of Roger Ackroyd, which I read in 2017, and I liked it, but I knew the twist, 
uh, cause I've seen the TV film and with this, um, if you can avoid spoilers for this, do because it is so much better going into it not knowing uh, what the twist is. Um, but I did find it interesting uh, reading the hints after knowing um, the whodunit. Like, it's very interesting, but definitely go into this blind if you can. And then I have Death in the Clouds, which is a later Poro, um, but I'm very excited to get to this one because um, I like the TV adaptation, but also uh, this features in a Doctor Who episode about um, Agatha Christie. So, yeah. Okay, then we have these three that all match, um, but they're all different um, series and stuff. Uh, this is actually a standalone Crooked House, and um, I'm... I was in a hurry to read this because I thought the film was getting ready to come out. Turns out it came and went and I didn't know that. Um, it could be that it only came out in the UK and that's why I didn't know that it was out. Um, but it apparently came out the same time that Murder on the Orient Express came out. Um, so it's actually now on DVD and I have put uh, my name on the hold list for the library. So I'll just read this sometime this year, but I'm like 38th in line for the film, so it'll be quite a while. Uh, but yeah, looking forward to this, because apparently it's a very good standalone. Next is Cat Among the Pigeons. Um, this is another kind of later Poirot, so um, I haven't gotten to it yet, but again, I have um, seen the film adaptation, um, and if the book is anything like the film, I'm not really looking too forward to it, but hopefully I end up liking this a lot more than the film. Um, it's just a darker one, so anyway, there's that. And then last but not least, um, we have the one that I'm probably most looking forward to of these editions, and that is um, At Bertram's Hotel, which is a Miss Marple, um, and it's one of my favorite of the Miss Marple adaptations. Uh, so I'm very much looking forward to reading this one, and it's also my favorite as far as the book design. I think the illustrations are really pretty. Um, and then I have this, these five um, that all match. Um, four of them came in this Best Love Sleuths box set that I got at the used bookstore. Um, so I have A Murder is Announced, which is a Miss Marple, um, and I either got this one from my grandmother or got it from the, uh, used bookstore, I'm not sure which. And then Dumb Witness, which is a Poirot, and this is the one, one of the Poirots that I'm most looking forward to because it's one of my favorite of the adaptations. And then Three Act Tragedy, I think this is actually the next Poirot that I'll be reading, so that'll be a lot of fun. Um, and then Taken at the Flood, which I think is again a little bit later, but I'm not totally positive. Um, oh, and it's another Poirot. Um, and then The Secret of Chimneys, which is actually, uh, the first in what I guess is a quartet. Um, it is the first of the Superintendent Battle books, and I believe there are four of those, so that's why I'm saying quartet, I'm not totally sure. Um, but I am looking forward to this one. And this is another standalone that they actually, I mean, not standalone, it's another uh, one that does not involve uh, Miss Marple that they actually adapted as a Miss Marple. So anyway, um, and then real quick before I forget this, I have Poirot Investigates, narrated by David Suchet, um, who of course plays Poirot. And um, I love this because he does such a fantastic job because um, he narrates in his regular English accent and then he just seamlessly slips into the Belgian accent that he uses for Poirot whenever he's doing Poirot's dialogue and it's like you're watching the TV show with your eyes closed. I don't know, um, but it's fantastic. Um, okay, last, let's see if I can get these all in here really quickly. Um, Secret of Chimneys, I mean, Secret Adversary, which is the first Tommy and Tuppence, um, and these are all William and Mar William and Mar William Morrow um, editions. 
450 from Paddington, which is a Miss Marple that I have read and loved. Uh, the Big Four, which is a Poirot that I didn't love so much. Parallel End House, which is a Poirot that I have read that I did really enjoy. Mirror Cracked from Side to Side, which is a Marple that I have not read yet. The same with Caribbean Mystery, as well as The Moving Finger, and A Pocket Full of Rye. And then, last but not least, we have NRM, which is the third Tommy and Tuppence book. Um, I haven't started this one yet. I have finished Partners in Crime, but I read that through the library. But it is one of my favorites, so I need to get it um, in this edition. So, there's those. And then, last but not least, very quickly, I have um, both of these sets of the Agatha Christie Hour. Um, the other one I can't find at the moment, but I do have two. And then I have, um, and then there were none as an audiobook, um, as well as maybe 450 from Paddington, but I may have returned to that. I'm 